The psalmist says this in Psalm 111. He says, praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart. In the company of the upright and in the assembly. Amen. You know, when we were called out of darkness into God's miraculous life, we were made upright before God. And together as a church, we are an assembly. We are together worshiping. And so as we worship, we want to give praise to God because he alone deserves it. Amen. It says that great are the works of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. Splendid and majestic in his works. It's his work. And his righteousness endures forever. He has made his wonders to be remembered. Now the Lord is gracious and compassionate. He has given food to those who fear him. And he remember his covenant forever. Amen. His covenant concerning your life, he's going to remember it forever. You know, when I read scriptures like this, I get energy out of it. I get excited because I know God's got me covered. I don't know what situation you brought this morning, but remember this, God's got you covered. Amen. You know, we want to enter into what we call our ministry time. And during ministry time, our team is going to lead us again in another song. And when they sing or they, they will worship, we want you to join them in worship. But you can respond in three different ways. You know, the first way you can respond is really by, you know, coming to the front here. Just to kneel and then to pray, to pour your hearts out to God, to make petitions known to God. 
in the life church we make room for people so we want to create this atmosphere this environment where you can come you can kneel you can pray we call it the altar it's a powerful place where we bring exchange we bring all our burdens we lay it before god and god sees us through amen you know the second way we can also respond this morning is by communion jesus christ instructs his believers when they meet together he instructs them to break bread um, he said the body, the, the bread signifies his body that was broken for him, for, the, um, uh, for our body and for the forgiveness of our sins. Um, the wine is, you know, the blood of Jesus that was shed for every man for the forgiveness of their sins. Amen. And so we have communion elements in the house. You can just locate one um, by looking around. There's a flashlight. Our ushers can help you get a communion element. You know, you can move to your seat. If you can get together with other believers and together, remember this one thing, that Jesus Christ did it for you. Your sins are forgiven. You are saved. And then you are doing that, remembering him. Amen. In the Life Church, we believe that if you've committed your life to Christ, if you've made the Lord Jesus your Lord and personal Savior, you are welcome to partake. And as you do that, just check yourself. Make sure that you are right with God. And we know that as we partake in this, our lives will never be the same. You know, the third way we can respond this morning is really by coming to the front and then partnering with one of our prayer leaders here. These folks here are very anointed. They are powerful. Uh, you need prayer in any um, situation. If there's any burden on your heart, you need somebody to stand in the gap to pray with you. We want you to reach out. They'll be in the front here, in front of the stage, to my right and to my left, just behind the screens. They are ready to partner with you in prayer. And we know that if one can change a thousand, two can change ten thousand. And as you agree with them in prayer, we believe that your lives will never be the same. Amen. Church, let us pray this morning. Father, we thank you for your presence here. Your presence is heaven to us. We know that, Lord, you are going to meet us all at the point of our needs as we respond this morning in ministry time. Touch your people. We thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, church, let's respond.
the mountains, Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, and Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. over our families in the name of Jesus because your word says at the mention of the name Jesus every knee would bow and every tongue would confess that Jesus is king hallelujah that Jesus is Lord come on put your hands together for Jesus this morning thank you Lord for your presence we call Jesus in our gathering this morning have your way Jesus Holy Spirit, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Wonderful. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Dennis Awasabisa. 
try to say that very fast. Awasabisa. Um, I'm one of the volunteers here at the Life Church. And every Sunday, I get excited to come into the presence of the Lord just to get to serve and then to do what we do here. And I believe that your life here will never be the same um, as you worship with us this morning. Amen. But we want to acknowledge the presence of very important guests this morning. Amen. Tell somebody very important guests. Amen. We want to acknowledge the presence of our first-time guests. Is there any first person, first-time guests worshiping with us this morning? Oh, come on, church. Let's give them a hand. Yeah, thank you so much. Wow, wonderful. You know, we know that some, we have some people also that, watches, that watch us online. And so we also want to say welcome to the Live Church. We are here in Massachusetts. If you are in town, please check us out. We are in the night of Columbus and Leominster. Come and check us out. We would love to have you in person, fellowship with us. Amen. So again, God bless you so much for coming this morning. We want to walk alongside you on this journey we call life. As a church, we want to be able to support you on this journey. And one way we can do that is really get to know you, just connect with you. And we'll really appreciate it if you can do us one favor before you leave this morning. If you can fill this um, connection card, right? It's our connection card right here. It gives us the opportunity to get to know you. We have it on every seat. So wherever you are sitting, chances are maybe you are seated on one of these cards. If you can do us a favor, we just want to get to know you, um, your name, um, best way we can reach you, your email. If it's your first time, you can check the box. If you made a fresh start with God, uh, Pastor Paul will be coming up to talk about fr fresh start in a few moments. But if you made a fresh start with God also, you can check that box. If you'd like to hear more about discovery or get to know about discovery, also live group, you can check it. If you have a prayer um, request or you want to share a testimony, you can put that also on this card. We would love to hear what God is doing in your life. And during the service, you can either drop it in our giving um, um, bowl as we pass it around or our um, giving kiosk on your way out, you can drop it in there. But if it's your first time, I'd like to encourage you to hold on to it because there's a special gift we want to offer you. Um, as a church, we want to be able to put in your hands this very nice mug. You know, as a, on a cold day like this, you want to have some coffee. Um, hopefully, um, if you drop this um, card before you leave, one of our team members will be able to put that in your hands. Amen. So again, thank you so much for coming, and we pray that your life will never be the same. We want to continue into what we call our, our next part of our worship we call offering. Um, we consider offering as a very vital part of our worship this morning. In the Old, Intest um, the Old Testament, Christians or believers or the people of God always gave sacrifice to God when they went. They offered something to God so as a form of worship. So we also want to do that this morning in our giving. We want to give offering to support the work that we do here. Um, you know, just meeting here together as a church, um, it requires, you know, um, some financial um, investment. And so thank you so much for giving, uh, you know, investing in our access team. There they are. You know, our access ministry is our, they are our student ministry from 6 to 12 grade. They come here every Wednesday. You should come and check them out here at some point. Uh, you know, we have people from different churches, different environments, even join them on, on Wednesday. And it's all because of your giving that we are able to invest in their lives. You know, we say it here in the Life Church. We give generously to invest in changed lives. These students here, their lives are changed every day. As a church, we do ministry. We support international ministries. You know, even in our community we also support some work there so again thank you so much for giving to support what we do here we believe that our giving will go a long way to change lives and god will bless you a hundredfold return amen now if you want to help and um, give or you want to support what we do here you know you can do it in various ways one way you can do is through the envelope system our ushers here are ready to hand you an envelope if you if you want to give either in cash or check they'll be able to give it an envelope and you can drop it in you know the other way you can also give is by you know scanning the qr code i love this qr code it takes you to our website where you can log in and then securely give to support what we do you can link up your bank account to it and then you know you can do it automatically every month you can give to support what we do here. So again, God bless you so much for supporting what we do here. We believe that we are making impact in the lives of many. Amen. 
Well, can we have a word of prayer this morning? Father, we thank you for your people. We thank you for, Lord, blessing us. We give back to you, Lord, as our, our, our worship to you. We submit to you our offerings. We pray that you bless your people. Bless this offerings. Cause it to go a long way to indeed, Father, be an investment in changed lives. Bless your people as they give. See us through, Lord. Bless us financially. As your word says, we'll give and it shall be given to us. Press down, shaking together. Shall men give unto our bosom. Let us be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let us take a look at what is happening in the life church. Welcome to the life church. We're so glad you're here with us today. Each weekend, we have services at multiple locations around Memphis, New York, Massachusetts, DC Metro, Santiago, Chile, Florence, Italy, and online, where you can be a part of worship, hear an encouraging message, and experience an environment that is welcoming and friendly. We would love for you to be a part of all that God is doing in and through our church. The best way to get started is by taking your next step. Whether it's learning more about the Life Church through our discovery experience or building relationships by joining a life group, there's a next step for you. Are you looking for a place for your family to get involved in church? Check out our next gen areas, Kids Life and Access. Kids Life is our experience for children six weeks through fifth grade and has age specific classes during our weekend services. Access is our ministry for students 6th through 12th grade that meets on Wednesday nights for dynamic services with worship and teaching from God's Word. Find out more ways to get connected and what's coming up at church by following us on Instagram at thelifechurchma or by visiting thelifechurch.com. Amen. Great, great. Come on. Yeah, you can put it together for Jesus. Well, I um, want to take a moment, 30 seconds. We want to, um, you know, welcome a few people in the house. Um, Paul has a wonderful message to deliver this morning. And so if you want to just rise on your feet for 30 seconds, say hi to somebody. Just say hello, meet and greet this morning. Come on, let's go. Well, that made me feel super special today. Right? Well, thank you, Mama. What's up, y'all? How you doing? Y'all good? Hi, Maya. Hi, Kelly Reeves, Irene and Phil. Hi. Um, all right. How do I start today? Let me see. Every time I'm like, God, just, I don't want to prepare something when it comes to just my opening stuff. So I'm like, what am I going to say when I go up there? So let me see. Angel, you working on my coffee still? He's right there. Okay, we'll start there. Who's got their coffees in their hand? Anybody? You guys good? You, anybody need a coffee? I'm serious. We got a team that serves y'all. Y'all know that? For real. So if you need a coffee, go ahead and raise your hand, and I'll make sure you get one. So y'all good. Right there? Hey, can y'all check in with Phil and Irene? I'm for real. And um, if anybody needs a water, anybody need a water? Water? Okay. Just so y'all get a glimpse into who we are, we love to serve people. Amen. So that's the spirit of the house right there. Thank you, Angel. Y'all mind if I take a sip? Let's take a sip together if you got something. Don't you guys just thank God? I feel freedom in the house this morning. Yeah, it feels light. It feels just free. And I want us all to just feel free. So let's take a sip of your water, coffee. Come on, tea. Oh, that's a little hot, boy. Okay, thank you, Angel. All right, so... Man, I had fun in the first service. I'm going to have fun again this service. And uh, so what I'm going to tell you right now is, like, we're going to do, like, a self-evaluation today. So maybe get out your phone, your notebook, and it's all about, it's not, I wish uh, little Johnny was here to hear this. No, it's, it's for you today, okay? It's for you. So it's just sit down, think of what I say, and think about the Lord and what the Lord is saying to you, okay? And I'm telling you right now, a little warning. 
how many people, like when you're driving, right, how many came to a, like a red light and you're, you're going to go left and there's an arrow that's a left? And some places that I go, like you know exactly how many cars like will get through on the next cycle. You know what I mean? And like anybody been there, like you like, yo, I'm the car number six. Typically the light will change if people don't go. Like <laughs> y'all better go. You know what I mean? And I'm so codependent. I love people. I'd never want to make anyone sad or mad. So it's like when people don't move, I'm like, what am I going to do? So typically it's not, some people be like, Arr! that's not me. I'd be like, beep, beep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like barely touch it just to get there. Beep, beep. You know? So today, that's what I'm going to do with y'all today. I'm just going to do a little beep, beep. <laughs> All right? I don't want y'all to interpret anything like Beep! Even though it may come off and sound like that, okay? Just a little beep, beep. Amen? Y'all get it? Say beep, beep back to me. Y'all are cool. Okay. All right, so we're currently in a series called Starter Kit, right? And we're going to talk about the ingredients for revival for our lives. And I had mentioned in our first service, like, I don't think revival is just this one time, like, God just strikes you and you're like... I'm on fire for the Lord. Like, it starts with surrendering your life to Jesus. And then I feel like he takes us on a journey. And we have to be willing to submit ourselves along the way. It's submission after submission after submission. Like, I'm on a journey right now. And someone after this first service said, I can't wait to see what is ahead. And I'm just living one moment at a time in submission. Amen. So today I want us to evaluate where we are in that submission process. Whether you haven't received Jesus as your Savior or you've been serving them for 50 years, but there is something that's next for you. I want to say that. I don't. You could have been serving the Lord for 100 years, and there's still growth for you. It's not a place you just arrive, and you're like, I've done it all. Because if that's the case, he might as well just take you home right now. What's the point of still being here if you ain't got work to do? He might as well just take you. Your assignment's done. So I'm pulling out of you today. There's still more in you. I believe that about each and every person in here. Amen? So I want to talk about living a life revived. Amen? So I wanted to start in, how many heard of this king? His name is Hezekiah. I'm learning a lot about the Bible. I never even really looked at it like this before. And I'm like, Hezekiah. And then I learned some things about him, how he was, there was no greater king before or after him. I'm like, interesting. So I want to le read some scripture. It says, Hezekiah was 25 years old. Shout out to my young adults. When he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 29 years. Check this. I bolded this right here. He did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight. Hezekiah trusted in the Lord. Isn't that good? There was never another king like him in the land of Judah, either before or after his time. Check this out. He remained faithful to the Lord in everything. And he carefully obeyed all the commands the Lord had given Moses. So the Lord was with him. And Hezekiah, check this out, was successful in everything he did. How many people want to be successful in everything you do for Jesus? Amen. I know I do. And imagine God saying that to you today. You are being successful in everything that you're doing. Oh, man, is that my prayer for all of us? So check this out. Now in Isaiah, it says later, Hezekiah got sick. He was about to die. The prophet Isaiah said, Prepare your affairs for your family. Imagine someone just coming to you and be like, yo, homie, your time's up. You got to go. I'm going to die? Like, imagine just hearing that. So he says, you're going to die. You're not going to get well. Hezekiah turned away from Isaiah, facing the wall, and prayed to God. God, please, imagine if you could pray this. I beg you, remember how I've lived my life. I've lived faithfully in your presence. I lived out a heart that was totally yours. Mm. you've seen how I've lived, Lord, the good that I have done. Man, then God said, I've heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Here's what I'll do. I'll add 15 years to your life. Isn't that good? Wow, just that alone is just so good, just so powerful. Imagine near death and God, he's talking about extending your life because you've done everything that he asked you to do. Oh, Look at my life, he said, and notice that I've done everything, Lord. Like, imagine that confidence. Like, I need to be here, God. I need to be here because there's more for me to do. 
Sometimes when I get on planes and stuff and certain environments, I'm like, my time ain't up. Like, I, I walk with this confidence because I'm like, I know there's so much more in me. I'm like, you know what? This plane can't go down. Not to be selfish, but I have more to do. So y'all, y'all blessed right now because God has an anointing on my life and I got more to do. Like, I walk with that confidence. I know my calling ain't up yet. I'm just getting started, baby. Come on, somebody. I promise you that. I feel a new fire in me. Don, he be hearing from the Lord. He came up and he said, feel the freedom. Like, there's freedom in you today in, in operating that freedom. I'm like, okay, I receive it. So, anyways, this makes me, after hearing this story, I want to ask us all three questions, okay? And this is where maybe you could write it down. If God asked you to give him reasons why he should let you live 15 years longer, what would you say? Mm. Just marinating that a little bit. If God reviewed the past 15 years of your life, would he be eager to give you 15 more? Are you willing to use the rest of your life the way God has planned you to use it? Isn't that good? Those are such good reflecting questions. And you guys know me already. When I come up here, I, these are questions that I ask myself. So I just love being a big family, big brothers and sisters, and we just, we just talk like this. You know what I mean? So let's go to Ephesians. Look at what the Bible says here in uh, Ephesians 5, 15 through 17. It says, be careful how you live. Live wisely, not foolishly. Make the most of your time and take every opportunity to do good. Because evil is everywhere. How many know that? If there's ever a time to be revived and living a life of revival and spreading the good news of Jesus, it's right now. It is right now. He said, don't live carelessly without thinking. Instead, make sure you understand, make sure you understand, church, what the Lord wants you. Somebody say, who, me? Yeah, you. What he wants you to do with your life. So there's a plan for you. I'm not just up here operating my plan. I need you to get operating in your plan or his plan for you, okay? So here's another set of questions based on that text. Are you doing these five things right now? Are you careful with your life? Are you living wisely? Are you, are you making the most of your time? Are you taking every opportunity to do good? And are you making sure you know what God wants to do with your life? Amen. Did you know that 87% of the Christians in this building right now, due to stats, don't know what they're called to do here on this, on this planet? 87% of us up in here have no idea that God has called us to something greater. We just are going through the motions. Just, it's crazy because a lot of us have chosen heaven over hell, but not a lot of us have chosen heaven over earth. Did y'all catch that? Like, we just, we know we secured because of what Jesus did. Now we like, we just waiting to go home. And we don't want to do nothing else. So you're really, you would rather give your life more to the earth than you are to heaven because based on what you've shown me, bear, he said, bear much fruit. Mm, that's, what he said. that's what Jesus said, bear much fruit. We, know we will know them by their fruits. Thank you, mama. Like, there's more for you. Choose, choose heaven over earth too, y'all. It's not just I'm saved now, I'm chilling. No, no, there's more for you to do. I promise you that. I promise you that. So some of us may understand that our lives have potential and we want to do more, but some of us don't know the journey. And I, I remember being there. I was, man, I gave my life to the Lord when I was like 17. I backslid. I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. Like, I didn't hear messages like this. Um, and then I came in and I was just, I didn't grow up in the church. I had no idea. So someone had to break it down to me practically. Hey, Paul, next that Jesus tells us to be water baptized, go public in your faith, sign me up. Like, I didn't even know what half the stuff did, but because Jesus said it, I'm like, I'm doing it. I'm going. You know what I'm saying? I remember my testimony getting baptized. I just gave my life to the Lord that prior week, and someone said, next, you got to sign up for baptism. That's what God wants me to do? Yes, it is. Okay. And then I'm up there shaking in my, and I'm going underwater, and I'm like, then like 10 years later, I found out what water baptism meant. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I just wanted what God had for me. You know what I mean? I'm just like, if that, but that's what God says, that's what I want to do with my life. And I remember, saying, I remember saying that to everybody, shook. I just want to do what God wants me to do. Amen. Amen. So my goal is to try to make it clear today for a lot of my young people as well, like what's next for me? 
there's more for you, even at this young age, y'all. Like, <laughs> if y'all could only just start, yeah, like y'all already started by being here. And this isn't the end of it. This isn't the end of it, man. You guys are just being started. Like, there's a lot for you guys. So there's one ingredient to start living a life of revival. And here it says in Psalm 92, it says, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Those who are planted in the house of God. They shall still bring forth in old age. Hallelujah. Yes. They shall be fat and flourishing. Woo-hoo-hoo. Yes. Yes. Isn't that good? Fat and flourishing. Come on, somebody. We're going to take a sip of coffee right there. Mm. I know. It's okay, though. <laughs> but what I want to say is um, the environment you are in determines the level in which you will flourish. I need, you to know, I need you to know that. Okay? And so we hear these comments out there, like, I don't need to go to church to have a relationship with God. Yeah, I get it. Okay. But why are you going to block your blessing of really flourishing in life by not doing that? Like, we got to get rid of these phrases of, I don't really got to be in church. No, you really do got to be in church. That's like us, me cutting off my finger and saying, I don't need to be a part of the body. See you later. That thing ain't going to live. You cut off my finger. It ain't going to live. It needs to be attached to the body to be flourishing. Amen? So we got to get rid of that. I would love to ask them people, because most of them are married who be saying that. If you told your wife, I ain't coming home tonight, I'm not living with you, what do you think she would say? She ain't having it, Tony. That's like what we're doing to Jesus when we say we ain't going home. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. I ain't going home. I can do this by myself. Okay. You think your marriage is going to thrive doing it by yourself? No. Like, think about that. Isn't that a good example? But sir, you got to be planted in the house of God. Yeah. So if you have not chosen a church yet, whether it be this one or another one, I'm telling you, go find that church and get planted. It doesn't have to be this one. I want what's best for you, right? I'm really encouraging the body because you have something that our world needs. And I need you to get planted so you can give that. Amen? But if you do decide this is your home, I want you to commit. I want you to commit. So we have to get in the right environment, right? So in America, we have an environment that does not flourish at all. Like, it, it's dry, it's the hottest place, it's dead, there's nothing good from it. And I want you to show that picture if you could, Ellie. This place is in California, and it's called Death Valley. Do you see how dry that is? Kind of thirsty just looking at it. Some of y'all are like, I could catch a nice tan right there. It ain't about that. <laughs> so it doesn't rain. <laughs> There's nothing that grows there. But what happened was there was a crazy phenomenon that happened in 2004, right? In the winter of 2004, this place that gets no rain or nothing, it actually got rain. Seven inches of rain. So after that, in 2004, the winter, in the spring of 2005, look what happened. Show the next picture. Whoa. Isn't that crazy? So what they realized is that Death Valley wasn't dead. They misnamed it. It wasn't dead. It was just dormant. And that's like a lot of us today, man. You, there's nothing dead. You're not dead. There's seeds of potential in there just like that. But you're dormant. You're not moving. You're not in the right environment. You're not taking your walk with God serious. And then you're questioning, why isn't my life blessed? There's things you got to nurture. There's, there's water. There's nutrients. There's ingredients that you need to live a godly life. Amen. So the potential for beauty was always there, just like it is for you. So I want that for all of us this year, okay? You are supposed to flourish. Somebody say that, I'm supposed to flourish. (laughs) And what I want us to realize today is that we're on a spiritual journey right now. And what I do, I don't want to miss this. There's a card on your seat that says next steps with a barcode in the back. I want you to hang on to that. I want you to hang on to that. Don't lose that. One of the greatest things that I could share with you today is that Again, this is a journey with God, okay? It's not an event, but it's a process. The Bible calls it the path of life, okay? So there is progression, a path. The Bible says in Psalm 16, you will show me the path of life. You see that? So like I said, there's progression or a path of life. It's not all at once, and it's not all over the place, okay? It's a spiritual journey. So my goal for you 
is to find out where you are on this journey. And we're all somewhere different. But we're all on the journey. Some have never said yes to Jesus. Some have said that but never went public in their faith and been water baptized. Some of us, like I said, have, or some of us have so much pain, hurts, and mishaps that are still carried with us that we can't move forward because it's stuck in us and there's no healing. Some of us have not tapped into what God has created us to do. Like I said, 87%. That's a problem when I look at the local body and I need you. The church needs you, right? I ran into Kelly at Walmart. And I, I was cashing out in my own checkout. Beep, beep. I said, man, I saw Kelly and her son. I'm like, Kelly was one of my favorite small group leaders of all time. She's just the most kindest woman. Like, she runs this group called Captivating. This was years ago. And she just loves on these women. They leave encouraged, and they leave revived. And, they leave. and I'm like, what a gift to the body she is. And all of a sudden, I turn around. Kelly's right there. I'm like, Kelly! I'm like, what you doing? Where you, where you, what you doing? Come, come to church, man. Come on. So I'm just so thankful. But that's what I'm talking about. Like, there's more in you, right? And you're somewhere on a journey, and I want you to figure that out and take what's next yeah. for you, okay? And the scripture I want to lean into is uh, from Paul, the Apostle Paul. He's a church planner. He likes to write letters to the church. And he, he, he has this prayer in scripture. And we don't see a lot of different prayers exposed to us in scripture, but we do see this one, and I love it. So here we go. It says, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. He said, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you guys. He says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. He says, so that you may know him better. Isn't that good? He says, I'm praying for you. I just wish that you could see it. I'm praying for you that you would just know him better that it would get beyond just a head knowledge, but it would be a relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, that word know there, like if he said it to the crowd, like how I'm saying it right now, that word know in the Greek is gnosko. And that's the most intimate form of to know that there is. So they wouldn't have reacted like we did, like, oh, get to know, okay. Like they would have been like, whoa, to know? Like that? Like that know is the same know when it said Adam knew Eve. Like there's this intimacy. There's this deep intimacy that he's saying, I wish you guys could just get it. Yeah. It's beyond you just this mind thing. It's this, this, this heart thing. You feel it. You're, you're revived. You feel the presence of the Lord. You feel his peace and his surrounding arms. There's, it's deeper than that. It's deeper than that. He says, I wish you could get it. And like we all say, Christianity is not a religion. It's a relationship. We, we throw that around all the time, right? We have to go beyond knowing just in our minds but in our hearts. And then he says this, I pray that the eyes of your heart may, may be enlightened. So I'm reading that. I'm like, eyes on my heart. My brother Paul, my eyes ain't on my heart. They on my head. Look at We all looking at each other right now. Right? I'm like, what you talking about? Let me get this a little bit. But Paul was making a point, and he was saying this, guys. We're not looking through our life, at our life through the lens of our eyes. We're looking through our hearts. Think about that. It's deep. It's deep. But we all see life. Everything in life that has happened to us up until this point, and we all have a different journey, and that's how we all looking at it, right? We could all be looking at the same exact thing and all interpreting it way different. This message right now, I could talk to 10 different people, and I'll get 10 different responses of what you heard. It's wild, but it's true because you're, you're filtering it through your lens and what you have in your heart. So this is based on what has happened to us up until this point, and it's dictating our lives, which we got to understand that. What's in you is what's coming out of you. Like, it's dictating what you're thinking about. What's deeply rooted in here is how you're living your life. Okay? And we see things through, like I said, our past and our pain and our problems. Right? And many of us have them. I, I don't want to negate them. Not at all. But I do want you to find healing. Amen? I want us all to live a healed life. Amen? So Paul is saying some of us never dealt with this. He says, I want you to get your heart right. I want you to get your heart healed. And he says in the message, it says it like this. He wants our heart to be focused and clear. Yeah. Isn't that good? He wishes we could see how important this is. And because you haven't got a healed heart, we can't get to this next step in our journey, okay? So this healed heart is dictating whether or not we step into that 87% of finding our next step. Because look at what it says. He says, I pray that you will have your heart enlightened in order that, 
and order that. So you need, it followed a healed heart. In order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. The riches of his glorious inheritance in his people. So we have a calling. There's another step in our journey, but we got to get this healed, man. So once we begin an intimate relationship with Jesus, once we settle the issues of the past, once we deal with the pain of yesterday so we can see the promise of tomorrow, you can see God has a role for you. It's a purpose for you. It's a plan for your life. And you are a part of the equation. You are called. So we want to know God, be in relationship, our heart healed. We want to know our calling. Where we ultimately want to be is where we can have riches and inheritance, right? It says we have something that is going to store up in heaven. How many know that? Like I was talking about in this first service, your, our investments, where they're going right now, financially in your bank account, that ain't going with you. We all go to the grave in the same way, and we ain't bringing nothing with us. So my question to you is, what are you storing up in heaven? Because there's an open bank account, and what are you putting in that thing? And my goal is for all of us to step before the, the king of all kings, the God of almighty Yahweh, and have a treasure that's been building. You feel me? And what's my inheritance, right? The inheritance that we're talking about in the scripture is other people. Like, it's, it's making a difference into the lives of other people. That's what this whole plan is about. So if your plan is outside of, am I impacting the lives of people around me? We got to get on a different plan. It's not, I need a, it's a, all this other stuff is okay, your job, but what are you putting first? You know, because we have, we got bills to pay, I get it. But that's not your calling. That's not what you're really called to do. That just pays your bills. That pays your rent. That pays your mortgage. But what you're called to do, you'll be excited about it. Yeah. How many are living a life that, like, what, what do, you, do you love what you do? By a raise of hands, do you love what you do? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So Psalm 2, eight, it says, it says, ask me and I will make the nations your inheritance. Amen. So that's what he's talking about. I will make the people, people your inheritance. Amen. And this is where we live out our lives to impact the lives of people, like I said. And it's crazy because secular science, sociologists said it like this. They have proven that the highest level of living and the happiest people on earth aren't the people who have less problems, but that are living their life in such a way that they are impacting others for the good. It's called transcendent living. That's what they call it. And that's science. I love how science finally catches up with what God has been saying all along. Isn't that funny? It's like God has said this 2,000 years ago, like, get in, love your neighbor as, you sell, as yourself and watch what happens. And all of a sudden, we're like, people are really happy when they love people. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, no kidding. Our God said that a long time ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, so I want to say the same four that I talked about, but a little differently. So I want us all to know God, which is a fresh start, right? So some of us, like I said, are on that journey where you never heard the good news like this, like, you're a sinner. You're broken, unfortunately, because we came into this world like that. You have a thing called sin in your life. We all have it. But we lean into someone by the name of Jesus Christ who came here to die on a cross, shed his blood, and be risen again so you could be right with God. Whoa. So that is the gospel right there that he, was, he died on a cross for you. He was buried, and he rose again for you. And all you have to say is, I received that sacrifice. Here's a gift. Jesus gave you a gift, and all you got to do is take it and rest in it. Isn't that so easy? So if you heard the gospel any other way that you had to do it by works, you got to maintain it, you got to go get it, you can't get it until you're 40 or you do this, that, and the third. No, no, you can get it right now and rest in it. Amen? It's as simple as that. So some of us, that's our very first step, just saying yes to Jesus. Just simply saying yes. Then we have another step, and that's going public. Once you say yes to Jesus, inwardly let's show that to our brothers and sisters outwardly yeah, yeah. if it's true to your heart no i'm for real with this i'm being water water i'm being water <laughs> baptized some of us and this is my young people i want y'all if you have not been water baptized i want you to do this next week yeah. i'm calling all y'all i'm calling all y'all okay if you have not and i know most of y'all have given your life to jesus that's your next step okay so we have that next week and some of us have to go public in our faith Okay, we got to say, hey, I got on this wedding brand, band, man, like I'm married to Jesus. How about it? Yeah. You with that off is just like, I'm kind of ashamed to tell people I love Jesus. Like, I don't know. 
but if you really about it, go ahead and put that wedding band on. And, and it's a powerful moment, y'all. That was one of my greatest experiences. So I pray that we would sign up today for that. Don't be scared, man. Like, if you need me to be with you in that water to just be a sense of comfort, I'll do it. I'm for real. Like, or, or you tell me who brings you comfort. Like, but let's go public with Jesus. Let's say, I love him. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Amen? So some of us, it's time to get closer to God. It's time to go all in. And I say it like this. Christianity is not a spectator sport. It's not. You got to be committed. Okay? So today, I want you to think about three things that you cannot recover in this world or in this life. A word after it's said. How true is that? A moment after it's missed. And time after it's gone. I want you to do something today. It's not next week. Let me pray about it. Oh, isn't me? Let me pray about it. How many times you hear that, mama? Let me pray about it. You don't got to pray about it, man. It's something that God has been telling you for the longest time. We as Christians, I love doing that. Hey, you want to serve the Lord? Let me pray about it. Let me pray about it. <laughs> what you mean? We're talking about impacting the lives of people and sharing Jesus. Let me pray about it. No. You don't got to, let me tell you, I'm answering for the Lord right now. You got to do it because I'm looking back at scripture and scripture says that he said it already. You see what I'm saying? I'm pointing back to the word. He said, go love people. Use your gifts to impact the world, right? I'm coming for you too. My sound man right there. I love you. No, I'm just playing. But um, I was talking to Kiana last week <laughs> and she has a passion for the youth and she does this professionally. Like she helps people, therapy, therapy. And she said, what I want to do is I want to become a care coach, and I want to offer my services to help young people. So if they need someone to talk to, and she said, but I'm praying. I said, you don't have to pray about it. And she said, okay. And she said, sign me up. But those are the things, girl, I'm confirming. We need it. We need it. Amen? So this is what I want to do. I want to do a one-year challenge. I thought of it like this, right? I want you to give your life one year, give one year of your life fully devoted to God in this church. And what I mean by that is do everything. Do everything from having a fresh start with Jesus to being water baptized to going through discovery to find your, how you make a difference to joining groups, right, to giving financially, to prayer rallies, to serving, to access. And let me say this. After one year of you doing that, and you can mark it today, but get serious about it. If after one year your life does not change at all for the better, I will personally leave this church with you. But I'm so confident and I know my God, it ain't going to happen. I know it, but it's dictated on how much, because if you say, nah, nothing happened, okay, what did you actually do? And I want you to check off everything. And I, I'll, I'm here all the time, so I'll see your level of involvement. Trust me. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you go all in, watch the flourishing that's in your life, man. I promise you. So let's go like this. So that was number one, fresh start with God, knowing God, going all in. Number two is finding freedom, which is life groups, which is life groups, right? And most of us, like I said, are stuck on this second part of the journey. We're stuck on our issues, and we keep going back, and we keep pointing to that. I can't do this because of I'm sad, I'm broken, I'm this, I'm, and you keep pointing to that so you can't get ahead. I hear it all the time. So the, every, every counseling ses session I do or one-on-ones, everything is right here. Like, we don't got to meet no more because I'm telling you what's next. <laughs> you keep coming to me and telling me I can't get what's next because I'm so broken, so let's deal with that. Yeah. All, all of us have de are dealing with something broken about us. And until you take this next step, yeah. I'm suggesting you, you're going to stay broken. Yeah. You're going to stay broken. So how do we deal with our issues? There's a freedom step, and it's God's solution. The solution where we deal with our issues is God's people, okay? And watch this. We have to find a collective group of people who can pray for us, that we're connected to, right, that we're building friendships with. And we must, I have to say this, you must take the mask off of that thing that's really eating you. Some of us, we get there and we, we share a little bit, but we ain't really getting to that place. And if, if this ever happens where... You share something in a group, and it goes beyond that group, feel free to come to me or Pastor Emmy, and we'll shut that down quick. Yeah. We, but we got to create a place where we're safe yeah. enough to do this, yeah. right? Because we all dealing with something. Yeah. I guarantee it, if I had a private room and we had a camera to your heart, 
there's some brokenness that you just holding on to right now. It's that thing. It's that, I can't share that. But I'm telling you, you need to share that. I promise you, you need to. For the longest time, and I shared this in the first service, I dealt with pornography, and I tried to fight it by myself. You know how many times I went to the altar? You know how many times I did this, that, and the third? But it wasn't until I brought other people in to say, will you pray for me? Will you, will you believe God will move on my behalf? Will you help me with a system to get up out of this? And I'm telling you, I've been living, I can't even tell you the lot. It's probably five years free now. And it's, it's broken such a cycle. This, this, this attachment was the, great, the, the hardest thing to break in my life. It was that gripping. So I know when the enemy has a grip on you, that thing is for real. But let's do God's way. Let's go talk about it. Mask off. I'm dealing with this. And I need freedom. I need freedom. We all need freedom. Amen? Sorry, one second. Someone called me and messed up everything. So this is what I wanted to say, too. Most people don't want to take the proper steps to change their lives. They just want relief from their symptoms. We are coming in here week after week just saying, God, I'm believing that you're just going to take this away. I'm going to the altar again. Right? Right? But it's not true, man. you got to do this work. Amen? Let me say this. You're not responsible for your trauma, but you're responsible for breaking the cycle and not hurting more people because of what happened to you. And I know it sounds unfair because what happened to you wasn't your fault. But it doesn't mean it's not what you're responsible for to go get healing. If you fell and you broke your leg, would you just sit there and say, I'll sit here until it's healed? No, you're like, i got to go to the doctor and cast this thing up. Or whatever they do. But you're not just going to sit there. You're going to go get the help you need. So I'm asking you to get connected to a life group. Amen. And this is where I say all this is the Bible tells us in James 5.16. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another. And then you may be healed. And you may be healed from that. You see? The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Amen. So we receive, and I want to say this, we receive forgiveness from God, right? We go to God for forgiveness. You can't ask, hey, do you forgive? Well, we can, but ultimately our forgiveness is from God, right? And then we get healing through other people, amen? So number three, here we go. Discover your purpose, which is discovery that we have here. You are created to do something to impact the world, like I said, okay? In Romans 12, 6, the Bible says, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. Okay, so we all have a grace gift. Amen, angel? We all have a grace gift. When you find the thing God created you to do, you'll be good at it. Like I said, you'll enjoy it, man. Like as much as pain comes with this responsibility that I have, I'm so fulfilled. I'm so excited to be running along brothers and sisters. Like the problems ain't as serious. Like we all got problems. But, man, when you tapped into purpose, it just outweighs it all. And then you see God move on your behalf, too. You know, although this is so heavy that I'm in right now this season, it's like I see the grace of God just moving me through it all. And what a great opportunity to see how good God is. I'm like, God, I cannot do this on my own. And I'm in a position that you got to prove yourself to be here for me. And he does every single time. So if you've never felt that position, I'm asking you to get in that position. Okay? All right. So don't stay another year. I want to say this. Don't stay another year without knowing what God has for you. Please. It's 2023. We got goals and all that. Let's get it right. Let's find out what God has us here for. Amen? Let me say this. Have you guys ever heard about the Greyhound dogs or the Greyhound races? Anybody? Like where you go and watch dogs run around the thing? Anyway, so I was was reading up on this. A bunch of fast dogs that they chase this mechanical rabbit. They just go, go, go. And one day at a racetrack in Florida, right, the mechanical rabbit broke. It exploded. And tell me not, like fur and wires went everywhere, right? The dogs now, with nothing to chase, they didn't know what to do. Okay, so look what happened. Some laid down and took a nap. <laughs> After today, I'm going to need a nap, y'all. Hold on, let me get a coffee. Yo, when you talk like this, this is tiring. But I feel the anointing of the Lord, amen. But let me drink some coffee. Hold on. Amen. But so some laid down and took a nap. Some got so disoriented, they ran through the railing and broke some ribs. For real. And some looked up in the stands who were gambling, and they barked at them. Woo, woo, woo. 
<laughs> like, imagine that. Isn't that crazy? But when I think about this, it's such a great picture of humanity if you don't do something and chase something that's ahead of you that God has for you. Right? Like, you got to be chasing for what God has for you. And if you don't, many of us, and I see it, will take a nap. They hurt themselves or they bark at everyone else. <laughs> Isn't that true? I promise you that. Like, I've been doing this for so long. Like, most of the mo some of the most critical people that I've experienced have no investment into this house. But they'll come and have the most suggestions on what needs to change in this house. So I just think, I'm like, you have no investment. But God lays it on your heart all the time what we need to be doing here. I've never heard things that I'm not invested. Like, if I'm not invested to my wife, I don't know how to make it better. Like, I'm invested. So I'm invested in the house of God, Pastor Emmy, Marie, all of us. We're following the leading of the Holy Spirit. But you, an outsider, comes and tells us what we need to do, but we ain't hearing from the Lord. There's something up with that. I don't think that's how the Holy Spirit operates. It's not. But some of the most critical people are the ones who ain't doing nothing, but they got everything to say. I'm telling you, they're not invested by any means, right? So we need to get invested. So here we go. So what, this is the final thing is it's making a difference. So that's our volunteer team, okay? And this is where people are happy. This is where people find fulfillment and they're actually living, quote, unquote, their best life, right? Because you were created to make a change. You were created for this. God designed you for this. He designed you to not just attend the game but be a participant in the game, right? And it's sad to say that so many of us are just sitting on the sidelines when we're asking you to help get in the game. Come on. You're not a bench warmer. No. I'm telling you right now, you're not a bench warmer. I need you. Amen. I'm, let me say it again. We need you. Mm. I know, like, don't say that we have, but what you bring is your uniqueness. Yes. And we don't have that. No, no, like, really, because we're like, ah, oh, they got people in the parking lot. They got ushers. They don't need me. No, we need you because we don't have you. And you bring something that God created you fearfully and wonderfully, and he did things. He, when he created you, he threw away the mold, so we don't got you. So we need you, okay? So throw away that. The church is big enough. No, we need you. <clears throat> and what it is, too, is God created you to be in this because he says, in my joy, like, you find joy when you serve. That's what's crazy. Like, you will get filled with joy when you are operating in your gifts. Amen? So we need you. So this is what I want to do. I want to share this video with you. It's an amazing video. Um, and it, what, what, what you'll see is in this video, right, you'll see people that are fulfilled, getting their inheritance by reaching people. You'll see people are, they can't even explain the joy that they have in serving. So I'm going to share this with you. Let's enjoy it. Thank you, Lord, for the building that you provide for us, that we can do this thing for our community. Lord, and thank you for all the volunteers that have just given their day today to serve. Lord, just thank you for everything you do for us. Thank you for constantly providing for us. In your holy name, amen and amen. We are getting ready to pick something up. Excited. It's really touching me because I'm able to see so much people come together to be able to build a family, you know, and I'm very thankful for the church. Last year we only had one person. Today we had a whole bus full of people, almost 80 people. Have a nice dinner on us. <laughs> I love it. Oh. Thank you so much. These type of events are just a reminder to me of God's presence in all of our lives.
There was a point in time in my life where I could have certainly been sitting at the other side of the table. It's just so wonderful to be able to be here to help others that are going through what they're going through. Seeing the smiles on, on these people's faces and just knowing that they're loved by us, it just... Uh... I don't know where we come from. And, you know, this, this is what I love, you know? I love this stuff, man. Yeah. Now you got to come out here, all right? I was on the bus bringing our guest back and I got a text from um, Stephanie saying, hey, the gentleman from last year, the one person that showed up at the church last year is here today. And I couldn't get back fast enough to see him. I said, you keep him there. Don't let him leave until I get there. Hey, what, do you last year? what do we got? Let's start with that, okay? I'm going to go get some. Yeah. He had no family. His family, like, kind of just didn't want nothing to do with him. Now today, almost a year later, he's got a job. He's back with his family. He gets to see his kids. And from where he was last year to where he is now, it's just a blessing. It's just proof that God is watching. God is picking people up when they're down and just turning their life around. And it's, uh, I'm just blessed to be a part of it. Good. Let's give it up for Derek and the whole volunteer team. Some of y'all were there. But that's what that's what it looks like. Like when you're in your element and you and that's what I love when you're so close to that thing. Like many of us got so many tears in here. Because that's that's what God designed us to do. Like when you love people the way we express it there, there's this welling up in your spirit that just and it comes out of your tears. Like this is what I'm created to do. That's the love of God. Like, God is love. So what you feel is God. Like, God is on the inside showing that's who I am. Like, that love that you see in Derek, it's just, Derek's just like, I don't even know. Like, it's because love is just, it's unexplainable. It's this feeling. It's this deep intimacy with God that you're like, this is it. This is my purpose, is to do this. And I'm asking you, if you haven't felt that yet, Maybe you haven't felt it in a while. It's a regular feeling that you can feel often. When I come to Access every week and I see kids who are getting breakthrough, you feel it. When you come here on Sundays and you're serving, you're actually on the ground feeling the brokenness of humanity. You feel it. You know, I, someone on our prayer team this morning said, I had a lot coming into today. I was carrying a lot. I couldn't get out of this funk. But as soon as I started praying for people, I felt the Spirit of God renew me in that moment. There's something about serving God and using that to just bless other people, man. So this is what I want to do. Like I said, we're all on a journey somewhere. And I hope we all somewhat are understanding, okay, this is where I am and this is what I need to do next. Dennis is going to come up and talk about that next steps card. But what I want to do now is I want to address two groups of people. One is first, the group of people that said I never actually started by having a relationship with Jesus. That's your first step. So I don't even want to go anywhere else until we do that. So if you haven't made a fresh start with God and said, I received Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior, I want you to go ahead and raise your hand if that's you. And what I want to do is I want to pray for us. So if that's you and you say, I want to give my life to Jesus today because I never have, go ahead and raise your hand for me so I can see you. Okay? Is that anybody across this room? So what I do want to assume is that most of us, if not hopefully all of us, have made the decision that Jesus is my Savior. And now with this group of people that I have the privilege to speak to today, this is for you. 
this is where I want to go deeper in our walk with Jesus. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the worship team come back up for an intimate time where we can worship. And what I want to do is I want to open up the front here to say, by faith, I'm taking a step. And I want you to meet God here at the altar. And I ask the prayer team who have been fasting and praying for this whole month, would you be ready to lay your hands and pray for some people? And they're ready. The first service was so powerful that I believe there was much breakthrough up here at this altar. And I want to create that again for you. So right now I want to call to you that second group who says, I want to go deeper with God. I've been playing enough games, man. Like when I stand before him, I want my treasures to be full and him to say, job well done, good and faithful servant. And if you feel like that may not be the words right now because there's so much more in you and you haven't tapped into that gift, I'm calling you out right now. This is that beep, beep, I need you. We need you. You offer something that we need. And I'm saying it just like that. We need you. So worship, let's, let's come on up. And I would love for my access people to come on down. All my young people. I want all my young people to come here. And worship's going to sing. And I want us all to spend time with God right now. Amen. Yeah, Teresa Recker. You're turning over tables and calling for return. You're clearing out the temple, you're cleaning out the earth, for we are your territory, Lord, we are your church, we are your people, you are our God, we are your temple, make us whole.
surrender your people in front of you Lord we are before you this morning you call unto us you called us from different walks of life from different situations we come before your throne this morning we re-surrender our lives to you Lord we come before you we want to get deeper in love with you we want to get deeper in love with you. We want to know you better. We want to serve you better. We want you to accomplish your purpose in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for your people. Even as they re-surrender, us together, we re-surrender our lives to you. Help us, Lord. Help us remain committed. Help us to serve your purpose. Help us, Father, Lord, to lead our lives, to give glory to your name. Lord, the many who are re submitting their lives to you, bless them. Lord, those who are making commitments to, for a, need, a fresh start in you, we pray that you will lead them, that you be with them, Lord. I feel, I feel that we should pray this together for those who want to make a fresh start with God and the and, and rest of us who want to support them if you want to make a fresh start with God. Can you say this after me? Say, Lord Jesus, today I come before you. I surrender my life to you. I make you my Lord and personal Savior. Make me new. Make me your child. I submit to you. Take absolute control over my life. Today, you are my Lord and personal Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Come on. Yes, Lord, we surrender. Amen. Awesome. Amen. If you could please indulge um, with me for a few more minutes again. A few more minutes and then we'll be out of here. Amen. Now, on your seats, 
there is a car that looks like this. That looks like this. Does everybody have one? Please raise it up. Let's see together. If you have a card like this, it says next steps on top of it. Can you raise it out if you have it? The ushers can help you get a copy if we don't have any on the seats. Do we have these? All right, do me a favor, please. If you have it, can you raise it up? Ushers, can you help us? I think some people need, um, they need these cards. Thank you so much. Amen. We want to do a very short exercise here before we leave this morning. You know, as, as Paul said this, mo- this afternoon, um, you know, we want to get deeper in God. We want to be able to do a few things. We want to be able to get more committed. And there are steps that we can do that. So on this card here, on the back, there is a QR code right there. So if you have a phone, you just want to open to a camera and then you can scan that QR code. It will take you to our website and there will be very powerful things that will help you in the next step. So if you scan that QR code, you're going to get a page that says Discovery Life Group Water Baptism. And you know, depending on what, where you are, if you've never been water baptized, you want to click on that link and it will take you to a website where you can sign up to get water baptized. If you want to do discovery, which is coming up next month, details will be made available. Um, but usually we have it on the first Sunday of the month or sometimes the second Sunday where you get to know more about the church. And we also have a section for life groups where you can get together with other believers and then walk with them on this journey we call life. Amen. So if you have that QR code, you can take it with you. Um, just again, that is your go-to resource next steps how you can be involved more in church so god bless you so much amen but you know if you made a fresh start with god this morning we also want to be able to put a resource in your hands Um, we have a a book written by our senior pastor pastor john sibling it says fresh starts with god a very powerful book Um, we have we have copies available our ushers can put one in your hands and so you can read it and it will be a blessing to you if you need an electronic copy of that, you can scan the QR code on the screen to take you to our website where you can download that as well. And we have a Spanish version also. Wow. I love it. I love it. I should probably take a Spanish class. I, I really love the language. But, you know, if you can read in Spanish, we want to put this resource also in your hands. See one of our team members and they'll put that resource in your hands. Amen. You know, we are still in our 21 days of prayer and fasting. How many have been blessed by that? Amen. So we have only one week left. So it runs until the 29th. We want to encourage you to continue to fast and pray. Pray for yourselves. Pray for the church. But tomorrow, God willing, at 7 p.m., we are going to meet together as a church corporately. We are going to pray. Amen. You know, the team is going to be here. They are going to lead us in worship. And then we are going to pray like never before. Bring your prayer requests. Mama Marie and all the folks will be here to pray with you. Amen. So, you know, come blessed and then your life never be the same. Um, Also, water baptism, as we've already alluded to, we have a water tub right here. We are bringing the river to church. We are going to get baptized here. Amen. So if you've never been water baptized, we want to encourage you to register. Again, the QR code is on the screen. Sign up. Come here next week. It's going to be um, after the second, well, during the second service. Come here prepared, and then um, you'll get baptized. I think if you register, you'll be able to get more information about, you know, um, the day. Amen. Um, Also, we'll have prayer leaders that will be right in front here. They'll be down here to pray with you. If you have anything you want somebody to help you to to intercede, please um, don't be in a hurry to leave. The prayer leaders will be here to pray with you. Amen. God bless you so much for coming. Can we please rise up? We'll ask our host team to right now take their positions and then let us pray, church. Eternal God of mercy, we thank you for your people. Thank you for bringing them here this morning. Lord Jesus, as we seek to know you, as we seek to find freedom in you, and as we discover your purpose, 
Help us make a difference in our generation. Thank you for your word. We know that your word will continue to lead us throughout the week. Bless your people. See them through. Be with your families. Bless us, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, church. God bless you. And have a great week.